Welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. Glad you could join me here today as always. We will begin today with The Power Is Within Again. We're getting close to the end, chapter 15, and we will get started right away after you smash that like button and subscribe. Welcome to my new subscribers. Glad you're here. Hope you find value here. Share it with a friend. Here we go. Chapter 15, The Power Is Within. And yes, it is. It's not out there. It's within you. Right the wrongs. You can't change the past, actually, but you can go back and make amends for the mistakes you've made, or at least clean up your side of the street. That's what's important, what you think about yourself. Whether they, whether they accept it or not, doesn't really matter. By now, no doubt, you've had a chance to get all that garbage out of yourself by sharing it with someone you trust. If not, go ahead and put the book down and come back to it later. If you need reminding why this step is so important, I advise you to reread those sections. You really can't take the next step until you do. You have to follow the steps or the directions. Think about this. If you're going to bake a cake, you're going to bake one of grandma's delicious cakes. So you get out the recipe and you start following the recipe exactly like grandma did. But you find out you don't have some of the ingredients. So you skip those. But you make the cake anyway. You put it in the oven and it comes out and it looks beautiful. And you share it with your family and friends and guess what? It doesn't taste good at all. Not like grandma's. Why is that? Because you didn't take the same steps and follow the directions like grandma did. So you don't have that delicious cake. It's the same thing here. If you don't follow the steps, don't expect to get the results in the end that other people have gotten. Think about that. Think about what you're thinking about. Ready. The next step is going to be much harder. You want to make improvements in your life, don't you? Don't you? Hard is the path forward. It's time to do what most people do not have the courage to do. It's time to make amends to mend, to try to fix the wrongs you've done in the past. And you're not doing it for the other people. There was a, a fly. You're doing it for yourself. I know this doesn't make sense, but you're doing it for you. Because when you hurt that other person, you really only hurt yourself. And when you make amends to that other person, whether they forgive you or not, does not matter. You're making amends to yourself. That person is only a reflection of you and your consciousness. Figure that one out. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I think it's true. Works for me anyway. Conceptually, this is as simple as it sounds. Reach out to a person that you have wronged in some way. Admit you're wrong to them without making any excuse and ask them if there is any way you can make it right. In most cases, they will tell you there's nothing that you need to do, that they forgive you and appreciate you admitting your fault. Some situations are not so simple. Sometimes people other than you and the person you wronged are involved. It might not be wise to visit the man whose wife you slept with if they are still together or perhaps have kids in the picture. This exercise is not about cleaning your own conscience as at the expense of someone else's peace of mind, of the people that you believe wouldn't be harmed by your admission of guilt and attempted amends, write them down in three lists. The first consists of those you can see yourself facing easily. You're not afraid of what they'll say and might even look forward to the interaction. The second list are people that you would have to muster up some considerable courage to own up to. Third, List all the people that you could never visit, either because they would never see you or because they deserved what you did. <laughs> and you don't believe you owe them any kind of amends or apology. Yeah, I had some of those. It's easy to think about what they did to you, or in this case, what they did to me. 
and they deserve what I did to them. But that's not true. Two wrongs don't make a right. Do two rights make a wrong? I don't think so. Now is a good time to meet with that trusted friend again, the one that listened to you when you were sorting through your list of baggage. Go through this list with them and tell them your approach to each person on it. What you did and how you will make amends to them. Rehearse a few encounters with them and use them as a sounding board for how sincere you are and whether the end, the, the amends hits its mark. Now start with the first list. As we've done in every other area of growth, baby steps will be helpful here. Take your time and schedule your visits one at a time. There is no need to rush this process. One at a time, move through the list until you have made amends to everyone on the list. On the list one on list one. It's important to note here that if you've lived a life even remotely similar to mine, you will not be right about everyone on your list. Many will have much anger, many will be much angrier than you expected. Some will have no interest in forgiving you, that's fine. As much as this process could be beneficial to them, it isn't for them, it's for you. You're there to face what you did and let them know that you know it was wrong. Not just you're sorry, I was wrong for what I did, how can I make it right? Or is there any way I can make it right? In doing so, you face that wrong yourself, then let it go. You have done everything you could to fix it. There is nothing left to do. Give it to the universe for safekeeping from now on. A result of completing list one should be that you have more courage to face the second. These will not be easy. Steal yourself and begin. You are likely to find more anger than acceptance here. Again, that's okay. Bye. My daughter's leaving for school, so I had to say goodbye. She's downstairs. Be graceful, you wrong them. After all, allow them to be angry about it. Do everything you can to make the wrong right, and then, like the first list, let it go. Don't stop off in smug vindication, but don't look back either. You have offered recompense for your past. They are responsible for their future. Now, list three. I'm sure you already realize we aren't going to let this just sit on the desk. This is the most important list. Now that you've seen the healing power that forgiveness can bring, I hope you've come to a place where you can consider making amends to the people on list three. If not, take some time, apply the other principles of this book, then come back to it as soon as you feel strong enough or miserable enough to take the action needed. Keep it somewhere you can see it regularly. When the time is right, begin. When you meet with them, remember that you are there to clean off your side of the street only. Most of these people will likely not even meet with you, and the ones who do may be hostile. Keep yourself safe and do. Hmm, something happened. What you know you need to do. Keep the same, no strings attached, heartfelt amends you gave everyone on the first two lists. Then let them go with a blessing. If they do give you a chance to pay them back for whatever you did, do everything you can to make that payment whatever it is, even if it is a hardship for you. I've done many of these over the years paying for my youth. I've done work for free, one business I owed money to, then left the country for six years, You'll have to read my other book for that story. When I returned, every time I drove past that place, I'm skipping pages here. Uh, what happened? Well, okay, I lost my place. Every time I drove past their place, I felt awful. 
It was a constant reminder of my past. I still didn't have any money, so I ended up doing maintenance work for their building, even painted it for them. After all they had to, after all they had for me to do, I still owed 500 bucks. The owner told me to forget about the rest. Most of the time, that's all people want, for us to admit our mistake and try to fix it, but pride keeps us away. This is an exercise in removing the obstacle of pride so it won't stop you or others from growing. I'll stop on that one. Those people that I owe money to, I had done business with them for many years, and I had a, <laughs> a problem here with the local uh, government. So I kind of had to escape from the country. I got it all straightened out later. But that's a whole story, that's in my book. But when I came back, I did work for those people and they actually came up to me before I had paid them all off. I owed them about $500 and they, they were like praising me for being such a great guy. They said, most people wouldn't do that. I said, I'm not doing this because I'm a great guy. I'm doing this because every time I drive by here, it bugs me and I want to feel good. So I have to clean up this past mistake I made. And today I do business with those people. I have a charge account there. I can charge things, they trust me. So imagine that, <laughs> yeah, they act like I was doing something great and actually praised me and told me not to worry about paying the rest of it. And I was paying it off. So I don't understand how that works, but it does work that way. If you're sincere and truly want to make amends, there is a way that you can do it. And, and as I said in the book, if someone doesn't accept it, that's okay, you did your part. You can only try. You have to be willing to make amends. Some people you can't find. So you can do things to, uh, for other people. Uh, maybe you wrong someone by, maybe you stole something from somebody and you can't even remember who it was. You can go give a gift to someone without them knowing it for the equal amount of whatever you stole. There's always a way to clean up the past if you're willing to do it. And that's the important part is to be willing. I have to go for now. Have a great day. Thanks for joining me.